What's going on everyone? So I'm trying something a little new here to help you guys out. Over the many years of doing this, I have heard so many different things, you know, such and such you should do this or such and such you should do that. And I'm here to basically discuss in each one of these videos three topics. I'm going to call them either our myths, and either I'm going to bust those myths or I'm going to decide, you know, if they're plausible in a sense. As I said, over the many years of doing this, I have heard almost just about everything and anything. And there's so much misinformation out there for whatever reason. And that's why I'm here. And this is why I'm trying to do these segments. First and foremost, if you have a topic that you want to see me cover, please respond down below. It's that simple. Also, for the channel to keep growing, please like and share. I do see you guys sharing the stuff. It helps it out tremendously. And also, feel free to comment because it also helps the uh, video get pushed up. So hopefully you enjoy the uh, little segment that I'm trying out. First myth that I want to bust is do fuel injectors make more power? And the answer is no. So let me get into this a little bit here. One of the big questions that we have been asked a number of times is what injector is right for my setup? Then ultimately, when we get all the info back from the customer, we'll explain to them one way or another what injector they either need or they don't even need injectors. And their response is, well, I'm looking to make a little bit more power though. So I'd like to run a bigger injector. So I don't know where this all started from. I don't know if it started from back in the day when we didn't have the internet and it was a little bit harder to find actual good info out there. But nowadays, with all the info that's at your fingertips, this question, if you do your research enough, well, you're going to find your answer. So I'm going to break everything down here. I like to act like, you know, no, everybody watching this, these videos have no automotive experience at all. So let's use the car behind me. It's an Acura RSX. And let's just say the customer responded after we asked him the question, hey, what do you have done to your setup? And let's just say he has intake header and exhaust. Well, our response would be, you don't need injectors. Why are you looking to upgrade? And then let's just say their response back is, well, I'm, I want to make more power, supposedly maxed out on my setup, and I'm just looking for more power. I don't know if you guys heard this before, but an engine, in theory, is just basically an air pump. To make power, there really is no crazy scientific formula that you'll see like a big race car go out to the track and, and do this or that. Now, granted, all the parts have to work together in combination. You can't just go with the largest size camshaft, the lowest compression ratio piston, and then just throw an insane amount of boost at it and just expect it to work. That's a whole nother different story. The more air your engine can intake, so the more air your engine can suck in, the faster you can get that air out is going to make you more power. If, let's say, on a stock RSX, I should say, let me rephrase it, a stock injector RSX that has intake, header, and exhaust, and let's say, you might have heard this word before, duty cycle, let's say the duty cycle of that injector is 55%. That means the injector is working 55% of the time. We're go going off about, we're, we're going off of 100 percentage scale. Usually my rule of thumb is once we get to about the 80 to 85% duty cycle range is when you want to upgrade injector. And that's going to be a whole different topic because we could talk forever on that one. So if your injector with intake header and exhaust is at 55%, well then you know you still have some life left in that injector. Now, as I just said, the quicker you can force air in and get it out, the more your power you're going to make. So where does an injector come into play? Let's say in, in order to hit a certain air fuel ratio and you're sucking in this amount of air and you're getting it out and you're at 55% duty cycle, what happens when you throw a turbocharger or a supercharger? Those two would be called power adders. They're labeled that because they add power. So what happens when you cram a turbocharger on your in your setup and you're forcing more air in? Well, you're forcing more air in. Yes, more air is going to go out and yes, you should upgrade the exhaust if you're running a smaller exhaust. But what happens to your air fuel ratios? Well, if you're cramming more air in and theoretically you're getting more air out quick enough, you're going to start running lean. That's where the injector comes into play and you can add more fuel. So if you add a turbo to a stock injector car, stock injectors on the RSX, let's just say, well, what's going to happen? If you go in and you start tuning it, you're going to max out your injector. Your injector cannot keep up with the amount of flow that it needs to reach the air fuels that you're shooting for. Does that make sense? So it's that simple. It, you know, I broke it down under five minutes. A fuel injector does not make power. 
Now, some people will get upset with me and then they'll go elsewhere and spend their, or, and, uh, I should say, waste their money. And then if he comes back for a retune and he makes the same power, one of those things where it's like, I told you so. And I don't know, like I said, if this all started early on in the industry where, you know, this was another nice chunk of change for a salesman to sell you on. And you know how salesmen could be. This is why I say it's very important to find somebody that you trust in this industry. This is also why I've been in business now as I'm taping this for 24 years. I'm not here to sell you stuff that's not going to help you. I'm here to educate, share my knowledge with you. And then at the end of the day, if you still want to waste your money on injectors, if you don't need to, that's up to you. Hopefully I covered everything, but if I didn't, or I left something out, or if you're still having a hard time understanding, please comment down below and I'll, I'll go over some stuff some more. Let's talk about the second topic or myth. What I have here is in my hand is a catch can. And I will say the myth that we hear is, well, I'm running low boost or I'm all motor, so I don't need a catch can. Well, I'll simply say that's false. And let me explain why. So a catch can to me, I don't know if there's actual definition, but to me, a catch can is a can that is going to help relieve pressure inside of your engine and that is vented to the atmosphere. This is where it's vented. This is a filter. You're going to have your pressure coming in and then your pressure going out. An oil separator is going to be exactly that. It hooks up in line between the, the intake or the intake manifold, and its main purpose is to capture oil and or oil vapors so they don't go back into your intake or intake manifold. We're talking about catch cans right now. And let's go back to the main, the two main things that I said. A lot of people think that since they're running low boost, they don't need to run a catch can or if they're all motor. And let me explain why. And down below, I did an hour long. I, I wasn't an hour long. I'm sorry. I did a podcast specifically on catch cans, and that will be linked down below if you want to learn a little bit more. A catch can's main purpose is to relieve or evacuate excess pressure that is inside of your crankcase. You might ask, where is that excess pressure coming from? Well, you might have heard of a term before called blow-by. So you have this piston, where these are the piston rings, where they go, and in between are the piston ringlands. You have this piston going up and down inside the cylinder. So any pressure that is inside on top of the actual piston that is going to go through the piston rings is gonna be considered blow-by and is gonna build excess pressure inside of that crankcase. That's where a catch can would be hooked up to the back of the block or even to the valve cover. And before anybody thinks or asks, well, how's the valve cover going to relieve that pressure? The engines have galleys that will allow oil and pressure to escape from the cylinder head. And those are all tied in with the engine. So if you have excess pressure that is building up in the crankcase, that will make its way up into the head. That's why some valve covers are also vented. The other question that I'll really simply say is, well, you know, some guys think they only need two breathers or, or just on the block. The more is going to help to a point. So as I was going back and saying this piston's going up and you got that blow by, you got that pressure that should be on top of the piston is escaping through the sides. And now that pressure is building up inside of your actual crankcase. So what can happen? Well, a lot of stuff. As I was saying before, here's where the pistons would sit and in between are the ringlands. You can actually crack a ringland if the pressure is that bad. What else can you do? Or maybe you even had a buddy or maybe yourself. If the pressure is so excessive inside the actual crankcase, you can start blowing out seals, gaskets, oil pan gaskets, and anything else. So as I was saying on a low boost setup, when you add a turbo or a supercharger, there's going to be more pressure in that cylinder. That goes without saying, even when you're all motor, you're still going to have the pressure inside that cylinder you're going to still have blow by and you're going to relieve that pressure now i will say this and this is not all this is not new technology this is not just something that just you know the honda scene came around and people started doing catch cans if you go to google and you type in scavenger pump this is old stuff that v8 guys were doing if you're taking the pressure off of your piston underneath so you're going to have pressure on the top pistons going up and down the more pressure you're building underneath the piston what's happening well it's making it harder for that piston to want to go down so if you relieve that pressure even if you're all motor what's going to happen well that piston's going to want to go up and down even easier and what does that equate to well if this is able to work with less load on it you're going to ultimately make more power the bigger the setup the more power you stand to gain but ultimately catch can is not here for power it's to make sure that your engine is safe it's to relieve that pressure off of the piston and anything else that is possibly getting pressurized in a sense so as i said hear me out let me explain it to you do you need 
a catch can if you're all motor? Well, the definition of need can be taken two ways there. Do you necessarily need one? No. Is it going to help your setup last longer, make more power? And let's keep in mind, we're talking about not talking about completely stock cars. We're talking about cars we're modifying here in a sense. If you're all motor and you're calling about a catch can, I'm going to assume that you might have headers, intake, exhaust, and you're maybe looking to do a dyno tune, which all is pointing you into the same direction of where you're going. You want to make more power. So if you're trying to make more power, why wouldn't you do this if it's going to help your setup? That's the same thing. I try to, like I said, dumb everything down here. If I were going to run a marathon and every day I'm, my stamina is getting up and up and up and after two weeks I go and buy some new shoes, are those shoes going to help my stamina? No. Is it possibly going to relieve some kind of foot or pain that I'm, I may be feeling from my old shoes and allow me to run better? Yes. So hopefully that is pretty clear. I really don't have a time constraint that I'm putting on these videos, but I'm also trying to keep them within a certain amount of time. So if you would like to see me discuss more on this topic just let me know so the next myth or topic that i wanted to discuss is going to be exhaust back pressure and i'll put the word out there the question out there i should say is you want a little back pressure in your system for whatever reason such and such and such the answer would be no you don't want any back pressure since the car is behind me to make things easier we're going to talk about an accurate rsx here and now before anybody goes out without saying, and well, well, this or that, we're talking about one specific car right now, and that's the car behind me. Not newer Civics, not a V8, and all that stuff. So let's say we got an all-motor RSX behind us that we're talking about. And we have two exhaust sizes that we should choose from. Whenever you're picking exhaust setups, you should ask yourself two things. What is your horsepower goal? And what is your goal overall with the car? And let me, let me discuss that. So I got two exhausts here. We have a three-inch and this one is a two inch, I believe. So let's say a customer calls and says, hey, I wanna go with this exhaust setup, but I have some questions. Let's say one of the questions is, if I run this three inch setup, and let's say this three inch capback setup has no muffler or resonator, will I make more power compared to this exhaust that has no exhaust, uh, no muffler, and no resonator as well. Will I make more power? Well, ask yourself, which is gonna flow more? What's gonna be less restrictive, less back pressure? And as I said earlier in this video, consider an engine just like an air pump. The quicker you can get the air in and the quicker you can get it out, the more power you're going to make. So of course you would make more power with this guy. Now, as I said, you want to make sure you configure your setup to not only the power you're shooting for, but also you in general. Let me go off of that and explain that in, 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 in a sense too. So every now and then we'll get a guy that calls and he's torn in between two exhausts. Let's say a three inch and, and let's just say for the sake of the argument, a 2.5 inch. And let's say the three inch exhaust has no muffler, no resonator, and the 2.5 exhaust does. How much power difference are we talking about here compared to the three inch and the 2.5? Maybe five horsepower, maybe a little bit more. Here's my question that I pose to you and more so I want you to think about it. Are you gonna notice that five horsepower difference on the street? Absolutely not. Is it gonna cause you to lose a race against somebody. Well, it depends how close that race would be to begin with. And, but a lot of stuff also comes into play. Let's be honest here, you know, drivers and suspension, all that stuff. But let's keep it simple. Are you gonna notice the difference in the size on the street at the track? Probably not. Are you gonna notice a difference in the sound with your ear? Yes. And when I say you should set up your, your, your setup or your exhaust to your likings, what you gotta take into consideration too is will the three inch exhaust make you more power? Sure. Might you have a girlfriend or a wife complain about taking your car everywhere because it's so loud? Possibly. Now it all depends on your goals. We have a customer and he's gonna know exactly who I'm talking about and I appreciate him watching my videos. His main goal on his exhaust was to be as loud as possible. That was it. When this thing starts up outside, you can hear it. It rattles the walls. He absolutely loves it. Now if you're trying to drive your, your wife, your girlfriend, your, your husband, your boyfriend, your kids around, is that five horsepower gonna make a difference in your life? The five horsepower won't, but everybody else driving in your car, it's definitely gonna make a difference. So as we were talking about though, the main myth is you want some type of back pressure. You don't. There's a lot of you know guys that think, well, he's got a hood exhaust for show. It's, it's not. It's to, get, it's to get that exhaust out as quick as possible so you have less back pressure. That also comes with a turbo and how you size the exhaust housing. So there's a lot to it, but the easiest answer is no, you don't want any back pressure. But this is ultimately when I said there's a lot to it, why you should talk to not only your tuner about your goals, but talk to somebody that actually has your best interest in mind, not just a salesman. And you're gonna hear me say that a lot because a salesman's best interest in his mind is to make more money and put more money in his pocket. You gotta watch who's selling you stuff. 
you got to make sure that you actually talk to somebody that actually has your best interest in mind. So you might hear me from time and time, you know, well, he said this and then he went back and said that. Hold on one second. We had a delivery here and it's the weekend. Um, not only did I get the delivery, I also invited him in because it is insanely cold right now outside. But going back to what I was saying, it is very important to link up with a good tuner that not only has your best interest in mind, but your power goals and or a shop owner that is not just going to try to sell you something because he makes the most on it. And that's what we see a lot in this industry. You know, I mentioned in the first topic, we were talking about the fuel injectors. Then why do some shops try to sell people things that they don't need? It's because their best interest in their mind is making their pockets bigger. Let's say you buy an exhaust from a guy that's just just sells parts. He's trying to sell you what makes him the most amount of money in a sense. Then your car goes to a dyno tuner. And he's going to tell you different or he's going to tell you this is why you didn't make the power. With that being said as well, you might hear in some videos I say this or that. It's not me being indecisive. As I said, every setup is going to be different. Not only the setup, but every project, every person is going to be different. Let's say this car. Let's say he's running a straight three inch exhaust all the way back, but he only drives it to the track there and back. He never takes his family anywhere with it. As opposed to the other guy who's taking his family every day in the car, or he's driving his kids to school every other day in the car. Is the five horsepower going to be a big difference? No. Is the comfortableness driving it, being able to hear yourself, being able to hear your passenger talk to you, that's where that comes into play. So not everybody has the same goal to make the most amount of power. Not everybody is looking to turn their car into just a straight, dedicated race car. So there's always a little bit more into certain topics. This one and, and the catch can, I kind of showed you guys that. With that being said, as I said earlier in the video, please like and share. Not only does it help the tra uh, channel grow, it helps me keep pumping these videos out. Please comment down below. Let me know what other topics you want me to discuss. And I'm going to try to keep this uh, a, a weekly type type deal where I'm back and forth. So I will also add, if I said something incorrectly, I don't have no script here. I have certain points that I want to hit, and sometimes I do miss those points, um, or I don't want these videos to go, you know, 10 minutes long just in one segment. I could be talking forever, and I love to talk, and I love to educate, and I love to share the knowledge that I have learned over the many years of doing this. And this is ultimately what this channel is here for. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this first, uh, first episode of whatever I'm going to title it, because I don't even have a title yet. Thanks, everyone.